Hello first graders. We're going to start a new project today. This one has to do with making a whole bunch of different lines. Some of you might remember from kindergarten a couple lines that you made. Maybe you won't. But you're going to learn a bun bunch of new lines I'm going to teach you today. Some of them you've made before and some of them you've not. Some of them you might recognize. In fact, most of them you probably recognize. You just don't know what they're called. Anyhow, by the end of today, we're going to get something that looks. Do I got it the right way? I think I do. We're going to end up with something that looks like this. This is called a variety of lines jigsaw puzzle, part one. Part one, because we're just going to do the drawing part of it today. And we'll do the coloring part of it at a sometime later either next week or the week after that. I'm not sure, it depends on how long it takes to get through this. But what, by the end of class, here's some of the learning on targets. First learning target is this. I can divide the piece of paper into eight jigsaw-like puzzle pieces. That's gonna be our first step. I'm gonna need you to divide this into jigsaw puzzle pieces and I'm gonna show you how to do it in a minute. Second thing is, I can successfully create a variety of lines within my jigsaw puzzle. Every one of these pieces has different types of lines in them. I'm gonna try teaching you how to do it. Next thing, next learning target is, I can identify, meaning I can know what these different variety of lines are called. And finally, I can think about what I'm doing as I'm doing the project, and I can make changes as I work on through the project if I need to. Okay, here's what you're gonna need today. You're gonna need a blank piece of paper, you're gonna need a pencil, and you're, gonna, and you're gonna need a ruler too. Not for, not for measuring, but for drawing straight lines or trying to draw sh straight lines. And I'm gonna show you how to do that today. And I gotta tell you right now, if you make mistakes on it, don't worry about it. Just try your best, that's all I care about. Have some fun and try your best. Because this is all stuff, most of this stuff is gonna be new for you that you're learning today. And sometimes when we learn stuff, the first time, the first few times we do it, we don't always get it right. That's nothing for you to worry about though. Not worry about that, just do your best and however it comes out, it comes out. I'll be happy as long as you try. And I want you to be happy with yourselves too, as long as you're trying and doing what you can with it. Mistakes are allowed. Mistakes are allowed, just do your best. But enough of that. Here we go, right now, I'm gonna start us off. I'm gonna take this piece of paper here. I'm gonna be working with a black marker so you can see it. But you're gonna work with a regular pencil. What I'm gonna to need to do first of all is I'm going to draw what's called a curved line, starting at the top middle of my paper. And I'm gonna curve this line on down, just like this all the way down to the bottom of the paper here. I'm gonna keep it kind of in the middle though. You can see how it's in the middle. It's got about the same amount of space on this side as it does on this side, okay? That's the first thing I need you to do. Made a curved line. Curved line, does, we don't use rulers for curved lines. They don't have any sharp points or angles or anything. They're nice and smooth. I'm going to make another one now, and this time I'm going to be going. I'm going to be going across. Going across means you're going horizontal. What we just did up and down here that means we went vertical. Vertical is up and down, and horizontal is across. And what I'm going to do from the middle over here is I'm going to draw a curved horizontal line, going all the way up down and across the paper again coming out about at the middle of the other side here I got two of these but 
but I only got four pieces right now. I want to make eight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and I'm going to make another vertical line here. Another vertical curved line going up and down or down and up, whichever way you want to do it. But this one, I'm going to have to start it like right in between this line here and the edge of the paper. So I'm going to start right about here. I'm going to make another curved line. Like that. And then I need to add another one on this side between the first line I made and the edge of the paper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another one here, starting out close to the middle once again, and working my way down. Curve it down, down, and like that. Oh, and my paper just decided to fly away on me. Sticky tech, the sticky tech stuff must not be working real good right now. Let's try this again here. Now what I have to do is this. I have to make these lines again. Here's the reason why. When we get to the when we get to the outlining part of the project, which won't be today, I want these to be nice thick lines here so I could tell where my pieces are as compared to the rest of the lines on the paper here. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to make double lines here, and you're going to need to do that too. A little bit apart from the one you just did, I'm going to have you make another one that doesn't quite touch it, but come close to touching it. Going in the same direction, you're going to make the same line again. If they run into each other a little bit, sometimes that's okay, but we're going to make it so it goes like this. One right next to the one you did. Same thing here for this middle one. Leave a little bit of space in between it and just go ahead and pretend almost, not like you're tracing it because you don't want it right on there, but coming close to tracing the lines you already did. You need to make another one over here too. And I need to make one more, the one going across here for next to the first line I made. And we're going to keep them just like this for now. We'll color them in, but that's going to be a different day. Okay. First line I'm going to teach you to make is going to be a straight line. A straight line doesn't have any bends to it, doesn't have any angles to it. It's not curved. It's straight. The way I'm going to do this is I'm going to lay my ruler, you know, I'll lay my ruler at the top here. Leave a little bit of space right over here, just a little bit of space. And I'm working in this top section here. Now to make a straight line, what you have to do is you have to hold your ruler down with the hand you don't draw with. You got to put a little bit of muscle on it so the ruler doesn't move. Because the ruler, if you hold it kind of loose and everything, it's going to move around. All, it's going to move around and you're not going to be able to get a straight line here. But if you hold it down like this, just like I'm doing, and you take your pencil and you go right next to the ruler, make sure it touches the ruler 
and then you go ahead and you draw a line like this till you get to the curved line that you drew before. And that's going to give you the straight line, except you didn't see that one because it's too far up. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to just move my ruler down a little bit. In fact, I'll do this. I'm going to start at the top here. I'm going to put my ruler right even with the top of the paper like this. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to hold it down with a hand I don't draw with, just like I'm doing here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a line. I got to put the pencil or in my case, the marker right up against the ruler. So it touches it. You want to touch in the ruler as you're holding it down like this. And that's how you're going to get a straight line. See that? Now I know it's going to be a little bit tough for some of you and some of you are going to make mistakes, but that's okay because mistakes are allowed. Plus you have a pencil or you have an eraser too. In fact, I should have probably told you, you should have an eraser on the end of your pencil or an eraser like this either way. Because you and a lot of you won't get it on the first try or maybe even the second try. Just go ahead and dry it a few times. Now I'm going to move my ruler down here. Right, and have it touch the bottom of the line I made before. Once again, I gotta hold my ruler down with the hand I don't draw with. I'm gonna make another line going straight across again, right up against that ruler, till I get to the end of this section. Now I'm gonna stop. Well, it looks like here is it looks like I traced my ruler. Looks like I traced my ruler, and actually I did. Pretend that's what you're doing. You're tracing the ruler. And I'm going to slide my ruler down again. And I don't have room here for a whole straight line this time. But I have just a little bit of room over here, a little tiny bit of room over here to put part of a straight line in here. Once again, pencil right up against the ruler. And draw it like that and you get your straight lines. What I'm going to do next is this. I'm going to move down to this section over here. And these lines we've already drawn before. You know when we drew them? Right at the beginning of the lesson. This one, I'm going to have a section where I have curved lines. I'm going to start up here at the top and work my way down like this. And I made a curved line there. I'm going to make another curved or curvy line over here. Now curved lines, unlike straight lines, we don't use the ruler for. And they bend. They got soft kind of curve. They don't have any angles to them like a triangle or a rectangle. They don't have straight lines. They just kind of relax and curve around. What we're going to do here is we're going to put four of them in here. I did three so far and I'm going to do one more here. So what I would like is I would like three straight lines in this section and four curved lines in this section. Now the next line we're going to make does not have any curves in it at all. It's kind of rough and sharp. Sort of like fangs or mountains or shark teeth. These ones, they go up on a point, then they go down, then they go up and down just like this pointy. What this is called is it's a zigzag line. We got some letters in the alphabet that kind of look like this, that are pointy like this. For instance, you could start off this by making sort of like you're starting off making a capital A and then it goes down. And when it goes down, it kind of and goes back up, kind of looks like the letter V over here, doesn't it? 
think about the other letters that have these pointy slanted lines to them, these zigzag lines in them. There are some of them that do. W's are another ones that are kind of zigzag. Make sure they're pointy when you're doing them. Do four in this section. Now the next one we're going to need a ruler for once again. But what I want to show you on this one is before I put it in the section, I, I want to show it to you so it's a little bit bigger. So I'm going to put it on a separate sheet of paper. Now when you do yours, you're going to do it in this section right over here, right underneath where we did the zigzag one in this puzzle piece here. Now this line, I know you kids have seen it before. When you've been in, it's on the road actually. So think of when you've been in a car with um, grown up. Sometimes you'll see this line in the middle of the ro road. It's called a broken or segmented line. This line, what you're gonna do I'm going to show you with a big marker here too so you can see it. This line, it starts right up against the ruler, but then it stops. And you skip a little bit of a space and you start it again. You stop it and you skip a little bit of a space again. And you keep on doing that. Start, stop, skip. Start, stop, skip. Start, stop, skip. Start, stop, skip, start, stop, skip, right up against the ruler like that. And that gives you a broken or segmented line with little spaces in between. What I'm going to have you do is you're going to put some in this section over here. I want you to watch me again because remember, you've got to hold the ruler down as you're doing this. Got to hold the ruler down with the hand you don't draw with so it doesn't move. Now these lines are going vertical again. They're going straight up and down. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start here in the middle of this section. I'm going to make one going start, stop, step, skip, start, stop, skip, start, stop, skip, start, stop, skip, right up against the ruler until I get to the end of the section. I'm going to slide my ruler over, and I'm going to do a line on this side of it. Same way. Hold it down with the hand you don't draw with. Put your pencil right up against the ruler and go start, stop, skip, start, stop, skip, start, stop, skip, start, stop, skip, until you get down to the end of that section. I got room for one more here, and I'm going to put one more. Now, it's not going to cover the whole section, but I'm going to slide my ruler right up against that first broken line or segmented line I made. And I'm going to start it over here, and same thing, up and down. Start, stop, skip. Start, stop, skip. Start, stop. Oh, I came to the end of the section here, so I can't do anything more, but I have a little bit of room to make one at the bottom here, too, like that. And that's how you make a broken or segmented line. Now the next one we're going to do is going to be, it's going to be broken too. And I know you've seen this one before too. It's going to have spaces in between. You're going to need the ruler for it once again. This one, what you're going to do, and I'm going to put mine right up at the top here. Well, Actually, maybe I'll just put the ruler right here because you won't see the one that's right at the top anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay my ruler at the top. But right next to the ruler at the top, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some dots. I got to hold the ruler down with my hand again, and I'm going to put a dot right up against the ruler like this. Skip a spot, put another dot. Skip a spot, put another dot. 
skip a spot, do another one. And I'm going to do that all the way across here, right up against the ruler, until I get to the end of the section. And what I just did there was I made a dotted line. Sign on the dotted line. I'm going to do another one right on or underneath that. I'm going to move my ruler. And once again, I'm going to do the same thing. That skip, 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 that. And then I'm going to have a little bit of room over here very little bit, but I may have a little bit of room over here to do another one right down there like this. And if you want to, you don't have to, but if you want to, you could put one right at the tippy top of your section too. Dot, skip, dot, skip, dot, skip, dot, skip, dot, skip, like that. So you're going to have either three or four dotted lines, whichever you want, however you want to do it, okay? Now these next lines I'm going to make are called closed lines. Because they, all these, a lot of these lines that we're making right now, they're open. They don't have any place where they close. The straight line could go forever and ever and ever. Same with the curved line if I had enough paper for it. Same with the zigzag line or the segmented line or the dotted line. These next ones though, they end. Their lines end. They're called closed lines. They're otherwise known as shapes. And I'm going to use these next two sections because we have two different types of shapes. The first ones you'll recognize and they're called geometric shapes. Now what a geometric shape is, it's a shape that is closed off by, it's closed off by a boundary. I mean, it's just closed off, no doubt about it. And these, and these ones, they have, some of them have straight lines. Some of them have real, real straight curves here. Or not straight curves, I'm sorry, not straight curves. But curves that are, that go a certain way. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to trace this bottle cap all the way around. And that's going to give me a circle. A circle is, an or is a geometric shape. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ruler once again and make some shapes with my ruler. Here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to line the ruler up like this, so it goes straight up and down. And I'm going to trace the ruler. i got to hold it down with the hand I don't draw with. I'm going to trace it on one side like this, right up against the ruler. And I'm also going to trace it on the other side. See, my ruler's moving around on me, so even I sometimes have to use my muscles to get it not to move. I'm going all the way down again like this until I get to the bottom. And I made two straight vertical lines there. I'm going to connect them over here at the top, too, or towards the top. And... There we go. I'm going to connect them at the top here like this. At the bottom, I don't need to connect them. And then I'm going to lay my ruler like this. And I'm going to make some horizontal lines. Going straight across like this. Right up against the ruler too. Hold it down. I just made myself a square there. Four sides. Even on same size on each side, going straight up and down and straight across. I'll make another one just by moving my ruler again. I can make another square like this. 
I can make another one over here at the bottom. Just by laying the ruler on the bottom there like that. What I have left is one, two, three squares. And I also have a rectangle here. Rectangle has four sides. Two sides are one size and two sides are the other size. I'm not gonna leave all these squares. In fact, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this first one here. And I'll take the bottom one. I'm gonna go with the bottom one. I'm gonna lay my ruler horizontal. Okay, and going across it. Use my ruler. And I'm gonna turn that square into two rectangles. Just like that. And then this one's already rectangle, but I'm gonna make it as I'm gonna make it instead of one big rectangle, I'm gonna make it two skinnier, smaller rectangles by laying my ruler vertically like this, going up and down like that. It's going to give me two rectangles. And then do something with this too. I bet you think I'm going to make another two rectangles with that. What do you think, yeah? No, not quite. This one I'm going to do something different. I am going to take my ruler. I'm going to line it up so that my ruler touches the work, and I'm, I'm going to do that in this top one over here. And I'm going to do it where my ruler touches. Actually, I'm going to do it on this one. I'll do it on this one over here, the square above this, these two rectangles. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lay my ruler so it touches the corner of each square, or on corners of this side and this side. I'm going to lay my ruler diagonally on a slant. And I'm going to connect this top right hand corner with the bottom left hand corner here. And look what my square is going to turn into. Two triangles. Bet you were surprised about that one, eh? Okay. Now I got to fill this out to it. I still got other shapes I could put in here. I think I'm going to go over here because I almost have a spot where I could put a triangle in here. I'm going to lay my ruler on top of this circle like this. I already got this side all nice and straight from where I was making those squares and rectangles and triangles before. And I'm going to just lay my ruler over here like this. And I got another triangle over there. And I got room for another triangle over here too. If I lay my ruler like this, by the bottom of the circle, and I already have, I already have this side done. So all I gotta do is make another point here. And I got another triangle in here. What I'm going to do over here on this side, it's kind of round over here already. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue with this round part here. I'm going to move it up and I'm going to bring it down like this. And I just made an oval. I've got enough room for another triangle over here too. So I'm going to make another triangle right over here. Three sides, one, two, and three. I could make some. I'm going to lay my ruler back on top of this oval now. I'm going to make a line going across like this. And I know, I know I'm making this look real easy and I know it's not going to be that easy for you, but it's something you're going to just try. Try fitting in as much geometric shapes as you can over here. And if they're not all straight and everything, don't worry. Just make, remember, mistakes are allowed. 
this is something we're doing for the first time, something you're doing for the first time. So just do the best you can. I'm going to make another line going from the bottom of the square to the end of the section like this. And then I connect these two together here. And that gave me a rectangle here. And this almost looks like a little triangle here, a little triangle here, a bunch of little ones like that. I can slide this over here. Just try squeezing these shapes where you can. I was able to make a lot of triangles in here. Okay, that's enough with the geometric shapes though. The next ones I've been talking about are ones that sort of come from nature. These shapes you'll see like in rocks, mountains, oh, let's see, clouds, leaves. What these are called is they're called organic shapes. They look natural, they come from nature. They don't, you don't have to use a ruler for them or a tracer to get a perfect round circle for them because they're not geometric shapes. These ones look like they come from nature. Like this one I'm doing right now, if you look at it, it's going to kind of look like a tree branch. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about here in a minute. That's what you would call an organic shape here. Organic shapes can look like clouds too. Like this one I'm making over here. And I can make another one just by going in and out like this. got two of them now this one and this one and this isn't scribbling either kids I'm actually controlling the lines here but I'm just making them go the way I want them to go what I'm gonna have you do in this section is I'm gonna have you make some organic shapes of your own it can be your own little creation here. Mm, let's see. I'll do another one over here to break this up. This kind of looks like a jigsaw puzzle too in a way. So make yourself some organic shapes in this section. Our last section of the day is going to be up here. Once again, you're going to need a ruler for this one for a little bit at least. What I'm going to do here in this last section is I'm going to make some diagonal lines. Remember, diagonal lines go on a slant. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just hold my ruler on here like this. So it goes off the top of the top right hand corner of the paper here. And I'm going to just hold it there. Just like this. And I'm going to trace each side of it without moving the ruler. Right up against the ruler on this side till it goes off the page. And right up against the ruler on this side until it goes off the page. I traced my ruler again and they gave me two diagonal straight lines. One of them, though, I need to make bigger, thicker. I got a thin one, or I got two thin ones. I want to make one thick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay my ruler. I'm going to move. I'm going to lay my ruler right where it was. And I'm going to just scoot it up a little bit from this bottom one I made. Oh, about this high. And I'm going to make hold it down, and I'm going to make another one right next to it like that. 
and it's going to give me a thin, thin, vert, thin vertical, or I'm sorry, thin diagonal line, straight diagonal line. And I'm going to get a thick one too when I color that one in later on. But for now, I'm going to just keep it the way it is. Two more lines to do. Well, actually three, because we're going to do one of them double. What I'm going to do over here going diagonally too on a slant is I'm going to make another zigzag line like this. Remember, these are the pointy ones like shark teeth or like some of the letters in the alphabet. Then I'm going to leave myself some space. I'm going to start here and I'm going to make another one. Nice and pointy, nice and sharp again. I got two thin ones right now, but I want to make a thick one. So I'm going to put another one here, right next to that bottom one I did. And move it like this, and like this, right off the side of the paper. And that gave us quite a variety of lines here. Now, like I told you, some of this is going to be easier parts and some of it's going to be harder parts. Don't worry about making mistakes. Do the best you can on this. And once we're through with this part, next, well, maybe not next week. I don't know. I got to see how long this lesson took and everything. But sometime soon, we'll go ahead and we'll trace and we'll draw these. We'll trace these lines and then we'll color them or color them first and trace. So. Anyhow, you have a terrific week and we'll be seeing each other very shortly, hopefully. Have a good, have a good week. Bye till next time. <laughs>